Hello, I'm Zach Scrivener, Chairman of the Kern County Board of Supervisors. My time as Chairman is coming to a close, and I would like to thank my colleagues on the Board of Supervisors, as well as our county staff for their dedication, work, and support this past year. It's been a year of many challenges, but also one of progress on several fronts, and I'd like to share with you some of the major developments and deliverables of this past year in several priority areas. Understanding how state policies and mandates impacting Kern's oil and gas industry are affecting the county's tax base and the county's tax revenue growth, voters passed Measure K, which provides a new locally dedicated, locally controlled revenue source to maintain public safety and other vital frontline services for unincorporated areas of Kern County. This one cent sales tax measure is estimated to raise $54 million in the first year of its implementation that will be utilized by the Board of Supervisors to address critical priorities within our unincorporated communities, identified by residents in a series of public engagement efforts conducted by the county this past year. Among the top priorities are the public safety services provided by the Kern County Sheriff's Department. Dealing head-on with extraordinary recruitment and retention challenges within our Sheriff's Department will be a catalyst for filling current vacancies filling our substations, and putting more law enforcement on our streets throughout the unincorporated areas we serve. While Measure K will be a major catalyst in dealing with the Sheriff's Department staffing challenges, among other areas of business, the Board has taken action this past year on a number of fronts to build upon the investments made to bolster recruitment and retention in our Sheriff's Department. We have created a new classification titled Sheriff's Community Service Technician, to relieve deputies from non-critical incident reporting duties and place them in a capacity to provide needed public safety functions on the street. We have extended a $25,000 signing bonus for deputy sheriffs who lateral transfer to Kern County from other agencies around the country, in addition to a relocation stipend of $5,000. We have also worked hand in hand with the sheriff to restructure the assignment process for these lateral transfers to ensure that those with valuable patrol experience are not placed immediately in a jail assignment. Incentivizing lateral transfers to the Kern County Sheriff's Department saves our county both time and money because these recruits do not need to be put through a training academy. This past year, all Sheriff Deputy ranks received raises in compensation, and we've implemented a monthly housing allowance of $2,000 that will be used to incentivize patrol deputies in rural substations to also live in those areas of assignment, which has been an extraordinary operational challenge. We have also increased compensation for Sheriff's Dispatchers as part of the SEIU class study as well as implementing a 25% increase in Sheriff's Aid compensation to fill critical facility roles that are otherwise covered by Sheriff Detention's mandatory overtime. Our board will be working in the early part of next year to address the staffing crisis challenging our Sheriff Detention's personnel. This crisis underpins department-wide staffing challenges, and having it addressed will be a key component in expanding the number of patrol deputies deployed on our streets throughout our region. The budget deficit in our county's fire fund has been addressed, and we are now working to handle a backlog of critical equipment and station repair needs of this crucial first responder department. In 2021, the Board of Supervisors invested $10 million in new equipment for the Kern County Fire Department. This year, the Board of Supervisors has approved an additional $18 million for needed new equipment, including replacement of a heavily used old Vietnam era helicopter, which is crucial in battling wildfires, protecting rural communities and saving lives. The county continues to fight an epidemic of homelessness here in our region, like so many other areas of California. Our fight is not just focused on services, job training and housing for these individuals, but also on the negative effects homelessness is having on our neighborhoods, businesses, parks, and public rights of way. It is a daunting challenge filled with various complexities and rules of law that frustrate those of us being held accountable to deal with these issues. This year, the Board of Supervisors implemented new local rules aimed at disrupting and eliminating homeless encampments in public areas. Part of this effort was an extraordinary expansion of teams of county mental health professionals partnered with law enforcement to engage encampment hotspots along economic corridors in our Kern River Parkway. Our 150-bed low barrier navigation center located on M Street in Bakersfield is also full and hundreds of individuals have received help and services and placement in permanent housing since its opening. This year, we created a safe camping area in a section of our M Street location that is also currently full. 
This safe camping area currently has over 50 individuals who are no longer camping in public areas and who are now receiving supportive services administered by professional staff. Over 20 individuals have been moved directly into permanent housing from this safe camping area alone this year. We have created navigation centers in Arvin and Delano to address homeless populations in those important areas of our county. Importantly, the county broke ground this past year on the construction of two new multi-million dollar inpatient psychiatric hospitals that will be utilized to address the needs of those individuals walking our streets suffering from severe mental health issues. Early next year, the board will consider development of a non-congregant supportive housing facility with full wraparound services for up to 50 additional individuals experiencing homelessness, further expanding the number of tools we have in our community to bring to this important fight. Investment in recreational spaces for our residents remains a top priority for the board. This past year, the board approved historic investments for county parks with the help of federal economic assistance, State of California Proposition 68 grants, and other funding sources. The board has approved nearly $45 million in upgrades in most of our county parks, and many parks slated to be either completely redeveloped or receive considerable infrastructure improvements over the next two years. After many of our library branches were closed due to the pandemic, all of our libraries have reopened, although for far fewer days and hours than we would like. Our limited hours are a reflection of budget priorities and the limited resources of the county's general fund, again, a result of stagnant year-over-year -year growth in county property and sales tax revenue. This coming year, the Board of Supervisors will be considering the expansion of days each of our libraries are open, beginning with those libraries located in county unincorporated areas and building into other locations, including branches located within the city of Bakersfield and other city jurisdictions. I'm pleased to report that this year, the Board of Supervisors has approved the expenditure of almost $13 million in state grant funding for major infrastructure improvements at 17 of our library locations around the county. This funding will be utilized to update aging buildings and provide new infrastructure that will enhance user experiences in these branches. The Board of Supervisors continues to be focused on strengthening and diversifying the county's regional economy. This means attracting and supporting new businesses in sectors such as carbon management and renewable fuel production and innovation, aerospace, business services, logistics, and advanced manufacturing. We are also continuing to promote and support our county's position as the national energy and agricultural leader. This means continuing to strengthen our position as an alternative energy leader among all counties in the state of California while maintaining our position as a national leader in oil and gas production through responsible, streamlined permitting and long-term planning. Over the next several years, the county will consider billions of dollars in new energy investment and logistics projects that will lead this diversification effort. This past year, all local, state, and federal approvals were given for the construction of the new Hard Rock Hotel and Casino project that will be built just south of Bakersfield. This new project will have an annual $80 million payroll and employ up to 3,000 people from our region, in addition to bringing a new and extraordinary entertainment destination for our local residents and those living outside our region alike. This past September, the Board of Supervisors finalized approval of a $400 million joint county and city of Bakersfield project with Sci-Fi Networks to install a fiber optic high-speed internet network throughout Metro Bakersfield including the City of Bakersfield and unincorporated county areas, in addition to surrounding areas, including the communities of Lamont and Fuller Acres at no cost to the county. This project will provide all homes, businesses, and schools, and every other property in the areas access to high-speed internet connectivity, in addition to bolstering competition among providers that will drive down costs for consumers. This project is completely privately funded, in addition to the construction cost, Sci-Fi will be covering all county costs such as permitting, inspections, and funding for a single point of contact to interface between the county and Sci-Fi through the duration of this project. In total, this project is estimated to cost Sci-Fi $400 million, with over $200 million to build and operate just the Kern County portion of the project. The project is expected to break ground between March and May of 2023 and will take a total of three to four years to complete. 
However, construction would proceed in a phased approach and fiber connections to individual premises will begin as soon as fiber installation in front of that premise is completed. Therefore, as portions of the project are completed, they will be accessible to potential customers. Sci-Fi is not an internet service provider. They simply construct and own the fiber optic network. Sci-Fi operates this network openly, allowing third-party internet service providers access to provide services over the network in a competitive marketplace. Sci-Fi is under construction with similar projects in the cities of Fullerton, Placentia, Simi Valley, and Rancho Cordova. Additionally, they are under contract for construction in 14 other California cities and Yuba County. In the cities under construction, internet services are being offered over the completed portions of the network by Gigabit Now, Ting, and Flume Internet, with services advertised at $60 and $69 per month for residential service with 350 megabits per second and 1 gigabit per second symmetrical speeds respectively. Aided with one-time funding received from the American Rescue Plan Act, this past year, the county entered into a three-year agreement with the city to provide an enhanced city equivalent level of graffiti abatement service in the unincorporated Metro Bakersfield area. This will build on the city's program of state-of-the-art paint matching equipment, robust staffing, and a mobile reporting application to provide an equal city and county service level and avoiding duplicate investments. This not only increases service levels, but also simplifies the constituents' experience as it eliminates jurisdictional boundaries and is a more efficient use to scarce taxpayer resources. This contract also allows the county to focus existing resources in other unincorporated areas, increasing the level of graffiti abatement services throughout the county. Additionally, the county has set aside a portion of one-time ARPA funding to invest in additional equipment and staff to bolster these services in our outlying areas. We are excited about this partnership with the City of Bakersfield and the increased level of service it will bring for the entire county. These investments will result in a noticeable decrease in graffiti beginning in 2023. In July of 2022, the county entered into a one-year agreement with the Open Door Network to provide litter abatement services in unincorporated areas of the county. This agreement includes three full-time, four-person crews focusing on hotspots within the county, as well as any special calls for service that are deemed necessary. These teams supplement our existing county crews and many times are working on foot to handpick litter and trash from encampments. As of November 2022, over 154 tons of litter and illegal dumping has been picked up by these crews covering over 708 miles of county areas, including places such as Oildale, East Bakersfield, South Bakersfield, Rosedale, and Hart Park. It has been a pleasure serving as chairman of the Kern County Board of Supervisors this past year. Our work moving this county forward continues in the new year. Again, thank you to our county's hardworking staff for all you do and all that will be done for our county's residents in the years ahead. We wish you a happy, healthy, and prosperous new year.